Hello, this is Danny with Pwn CNC, and we're here to talk about how we're going to hook up the Pwn CNC spindle kit um, via PWM cable over to uh, my Demon controller. Now, the Demon CNC controller is um, something that comes with, or included with the uh, CNC for newbies, New Carve, and a couple other models. Um, I have got the machine actually someplace else, but I do have the controller here and we can easily follow along um, the installation without the actual machine and everything plugged in. So what I've got here is the uh, controller, I've got the VFD, I've got the spindle cable, uh, this is the VFD, uh, the PWM cable, uh, control cable, and of course I've got the latest copy of my spindle kit manual. Let's, uh, let's dig into it. Okay, we're gonna start right here on page uh, 19 of the manual. And we have got our uh, VFD completely unplugged. That way we can safely remove the cover and we can access the internal ports. Now what we're interested in is this second port, this VF1 port. This is the second port on this long terminal. Second port from the left, um, as well as the fourth port. Uh, the first one is, the Second one from the left is VF1. The fourth one from the left is uh, our GND, our ground. So we're going to take our uh, control cable here. I'm going to throw some of it on the table. We're going to take it and run it right through the middle here. Send our red into the second port, or the second from the left, and the black line into the fourth from the left. We're going to tighten it down. Now, I tried to make these cables um, as nice as possible, and it was impossible to find the perfect connectors for these tiny little wires. So I ended up uh, improvising and found a nice little flat uh, ferrule connector um, with some heat shrink, and it gives us a nice tiny little connector, which is perfect for these uh, for this small middle terminal here. So we've got our VFD all wired up. We're ready to go. So we're going to put our cover back on, and we're gonna jump over to the CNC machine, to the, uh, well, to the Demon controller, that is. All right, here we are with the Demon controller. We've got a close-up of the Demon shield, which is sitting on top, and we're gonna have three wires to plug in. One is the actual drain cable for our uh, shielded PWM cable. You're probably already familiar with this because more than likely your cables coming from your CNC stepper motors are probably all being joined together and plugged into this um, ground port here. This is actually where we're going to attempt, uh, uh, connect um, our drain as well. But the other two here, we've got a black and a red. The red goes on the right, the black goes on the left. And from this rear port here, we're gonna go uh, one, two, three, four. So the fourth terminal from the back um, is where we're gonna plug this in. The Red goes on the, if we're facing it this way, the red goes on the right side um, or the front um, is where your USB cable is. The black goes on the back, um, which is the negative. And I'll tighten both of these down. There we go. And the last one is to hook up your drain line which of course it's super easy. I don't have no cables plugged in right now, but if yours wasn't, you could wrap this up into that bundle um, that you probably have going into the ground or the GW or GND port, this first port on the very far on the back side there. So there we go. Now we have our controller side of our PWM cable all ready to go. We're ready to jump over to some software. All right, before we go too far, we're going to switch over to our, uh, with our software, we're going to switch over to the VFD first. So here I have, I've got it all, it's all been, pl it's been plugged in entirely. What we have, it's uh, plugged into the power. Um, we're ready to start running our machine, basically. Um, but before we get into that, on page, uh, let's see, on page 21, there's a few uh, parameters that we need to configure on the VFD so that your, um, your, PWM cable where it works appropriately, right? So we're going to hit mode and we're going to change it to P0.0.1 
0.04, which basically says uh, where our frequency source is. Now, if we hit enter, it's going to be defaulted to 0 02. Zero 02 is this little dial right here. But we don't want the dial to control the RPMs. We want the PWM cable to control that. So we're going to uh, change this setting to a 3. We're going to hit this up arrow here, change that to a 3, and hit enter. Um, that will accept it, and then we're ready to move on to our next, um, our next setting. The next setting, of course, being um, whenever our program runs, we want to make sure that the, R, that the RPMs on the motor are fast enough, are, are up to speed by the time the motor is moved into position to make contact with the stock material. To make this go faster, um, right now, by default, it's about 20 seconds. That's plenty of time for you to manually click the buttons here, go do your thing. So if you've been using your CNC for a little while um, via the manual controls, uh, the keypad on the, on the VFD, um, 20 seconds is perfectly acceptable. But we need to speed this up because this, the program, a G-code a G file with the proper commands, is not going to wait for you uh, for it to spin up. It's just going to immediately start cutting. So if you're not up to speed yet, you might run into some problems with your stock. So we're going to change this. If we go to P0.0.11, .1, so 11, hit enter. Right now it's set to 20 seconds. We need to change that to 4 seconds. So 0004.0, hit enter. And we're going to do, that's the acceleration. So whenever it goes from 0 RPMs up to your desired speed, this one relates to going from that higher speed down to zero so that you can actually get in there and make bit changes. So we're going to hit enter there, P0.0.12, and we're going to change this to a four as well. Enter. There we go. So the last thing we need to do is on this Demon controller, it is a zero to five volt PDM, PWM signal. So we need to change, uh, we need to tell the VFD that a zero to five volt signal is going to come across and whenever a five volt, whenever that signal reaches five volts, the motor should be running at the maximum speed of 24,000 RPMs. So to make that change, we're going to go to P2.0.15. So P2.0.15. Hit enter. By default, that voltage is 10 volts, um, so 0 to 10. But since the Demon controller is 0 to 5, we need to change this to a maximum of 5 volts. Hit enter, and we are done. Um, there's one more setting you might want to configure if you haven't already. Um, looking back in the manual, we can switch this to 501. Six. Now, more than likely, your machine's already got this configured, but just in case you are one of my early adopters, this is a very helpful setting um, for configuring the RPM value. So we're going to change that to a zero. I've already configured it on this VFD. It's probably set to a one. Uh, just change that to a zero and hit enter, and then you're all set. So now whenever you uh, run your machine, um, the RPMs will actually show the full RPMs and won't show that decimal point in there which makes it look like it's running significantly slower than it actually is. Um, but we're ready, we're done here. Now we're ready to go configure some Gerbil commands and uh, run some tests. So let's jump over to my uh, cam saw. Okay, if you're following along in the manual as you're uh, programming this, you're probably already, uh, um, we're, well, you were just, we just finished the VFD command uh, configuration, which is on page 21. And we're going to be jumping over to page 22 now at the very top for the uh, Gerbil settings change. Now, I'm running a software called um, CNCJS. This is on a Raspberry Pi machine. And um, it basically lets me uh, run the G upload G code to it. This is running on a Pi on a touch screen. Allows me to access everything. It connects into the USB port on the uh, CNC controller. And if I can... It gives me direct access to the console, basically. So I'm not sure how you're accessing it, uh, what kind of cam software you're using, but you're probably already familiar, if you have a CNC for newbies machine, um, how to access the console of your 
um, Goebbels machine of your, of, your, of your controller. So here we are. Um, it's already spit out the uh, dollar sign, dollar sign value by default. That way I can see all of the configuration settings for my machine. Now the three we're interested in is dollar sign 30, dollar sign 31, and dollar sign 32. Dollar sign 30 basically tells the CNC controller what the maximum value or the maximum RPMs of your spindle motor is. Um, if dollar sign 30 in this output here does not show 24,000 and you need to configure it. And to configure it, you just literally just dollar sign 30 equals 24,000 and then hit enter. And it says OK, and you can run a dollar sign, dollar sign to uh, validate that that value has changed. Now, the next values we're, we're interested in is the, um, so that was the maximum spindle speed. We're looking at the minimum spindle speed now, which is probably already configured to zero. You can confirm it by looking at the output here. It is dollar sign 31. It should say zero. Um, if it does not, be sure to configure it. Dollar sign 31 equals zero, enter. And it should, you, you should see that configuration there. The very last configuration we need to set is related to a laser. So you can kind of switch between a laser and a spindle pretty easily. And you do that by um, dollar sign 32. In, in this case, um, it's a Boolean, um, is laser mode enabled. Um, obviously we want it to be a zero because we are not using it as a laser, we're using it as a spindle, an actual cutting spindle. So dollar sign 32 should equal zero. If it does not, be sure to configure it. Dollar sign 32 equals zero, enter, and then use your dollar sign, dollar sign to configure Daddy. your, to, con to validate your settings. We've got our settings configured and now we can go ahead and play with our settings. So if we switch to page, uh, page 24 of the manual, um, down towards the bottom, I've got a section called Automatic Control Testing. This allows you to uh, configure and control your machine. All right, here we are with our keypad. Um, it's blinking, which means it's not actually running, which means I can send it some command uh, PWM signals. It will change the frequency, show us that frequency, but it won't actually spin the motor. It allows us to validate, um, make sure our commands and our controller knows how to properly talk to it. We can validate our uh, voltages and that sort of thing through this mechanism. So on our console of our controller, we're going to hit M3S6000, enter. And we can see that since 6,000 is one quarter of 24,000, um, and the motor runs between zero and 400 hertz, 400 being the maximum RPM speed, um, we can expect that it'd be one quarter of the hertz. In this case, 100 hertz means that it is running at 12, uh, 6,000 RPMs. We can change the RPMs again by saying, you know, M3, which basically means move the spindle forward. Put a S, uh, M3 space S12,000. And now we're basically telling the spindle motor to run at 12,000 RPMs, that signal gets sent down the PWM line into the VFD. The VFD interprets that voltage, um, which since this is zero to five and this is halfway, it's gonna be 2.5 volts if you run a voltmeter on it. We can actually see that the VFD wants to run at 200 Hertz. Um, do the, repeat the same process, M3 space S24,000, maximum speed. Since our motor is rated at 400 Hertz, we should see 400 hertz on the screen. And there we go. So our PWM line is sending the appropriate zero to five volt signal. The VFD is properly interpreting that. And if we hit M5, enter, it basically tells the spindle motor to completely stop. Now, we can uh, enable it. So whenever you're running a job um, and you're ready to start cutting, you're basically going to hit the run state. This tells the VFD to you're in running state mode. No hands are going to be near the, the bits or anything like that. It's only the stuff you want to cut is, is now enabled. So it's ready to run. When we run the M3S6000, 
8000 setting, we can hear that the VFD is spinning up to 6000 RPMs, and we can see that the RPMs are right there. Now it's going to be not going to be perfectly RPMs, uh, uh, exact uh, value for the uh, for the setting. I mean, we told it to run 6000, but it's running 6150. Um, it's sufficient for our needs. Um, for a hobby needs, we should easily be able to run this. If we tell it to run at a, again, repeat our test, a M3S12000, we'll see that it actually spins up to a 12,000 RPMs. And just like before, M5, enter, we'll stop our spindle. Now, of course, if you want to see a little bit more about the uh, CNCJS, uh, we were playing entirely inside of the, if I can get my finger to touch the right spot. There it goes. It's a high resolution monitor, but reduce that console down to speed. We can actually see there are some spindle controls down here and it's currently set at a, let's change this to 6,000. There it is, 6,000, and if we hit the M3 button, it now sends the M3 S6000 command to the spindle, and it's running at 6,000 RPMs. M5 on the control, and you're all okay, set. Okay, so I hope that made sense to you. Um, we basically uh, wired up the VFD, wired up the controller, um, configured the VFD, then we configured the gerbil settings within the controller, to properly interpret and understand how to talk to the VFD. Um, this is, a, I, and of course I was demonstrating with CNCJS, but this would work just as sufficiently on the console of um, um, other uh, CAM softwares that you might be running with your particular machine. Just need to get into the console and in order to access those uh, gerbil commands and that sort of thing. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. As always, you can reach out to support at PwnCNC.com. I have multiple people monitoring that queue, so we should be able to get you an answer pretty quickly um, if you have any questions or comments. And yeah, this is Daniel with PwnCNC, and remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.